Hi there, I'm Stuart Castledine and welcome to Golf Cross, the great new fun game of Goal Golf or Golf as it's known in the business. Now over the next few minutes or so I'll be explaining the basics of this exciting new game and hopefully giving you enough information to get you out there enjoying this extraordinary new experience that's called Golf Cross. Now like golf the game is played over a normal course and uses the same clubs and follows the same basic rules but there are two main differences, the ball and the target. Now, in golf, the aim is to get round balls into small holes in the ground, but in golf cross, the aim is to get oval balls into large rectangular goals that are above the ground, hence the term goal golf. OK, before we discuss the game, let's take a little look at an oval ball. Well, it certainly looks and feels like a golf ball. It's nice and smooth, it's glossy and white with all the usual dimples, and it's about the same size and weight, but the really intriguing thing about it is that it's oval. Now, when you're playing with an oval ball, you're actually playing with a genuinely smart ball because despite its appearances, the oval ball is more aerodynamically stable than a round ball. When, for example, the ball is placed in a vertical or upright position, it's virtually impossible to slice or to hook. So in other words, it's always going to go straight. But if you do want to turn the ball in flight, you simply adjust the position of the ball on the teacup before you hit it. It's as simple as that. Now these are called teacups. They're made of rubber and their job is to hold the oval ball at any angle before you hit it. Now you simply just push a regular tee through the bottom of the cup like this and then you spike the whole thing into the ground. It's as simple as that. Now remember, the oval ball's flight path is predetermined by how you position it onto the teacup before you hit it. And there are four basic positions that you can set the ball. Now each position will program the flight path of our smart ball in a different way. Now one position, for example, will cause the ball to fly straight ahead, another will turn it to the left or to the right, another will stop it dead on landing, another will bring the ball back and you can even achieve what we call a snake shot with another position. Now once you've learnt the basic positions, and they're all pretty easy to remember by the way, common sense and experience will tell you how best to position the ball in various playing situations. Right, let's get down to it quite literally, let's go. Now the first basic position is a ball perfectly upright, dead vertical in the teacup, like this. Now in this position is the one that's easiest to hit and it will be the least troublesome when you're out there on the course for the simple reason that it should always fly fairly straight. Now you can use this position to apply backspin even with the driver so the ball will stop quickly on landing. Now the face of the club striking below the centre of the ball gives it plenty of backspin and consequently a higher trajectory. In fact, advanced golf cross players use this shot to stop the ball quickly because the harder you hit the ball, the more backspin you create which means on landing the ball can stop dead or it can even travel backwards towards the player. Now in flight the ball spins rapidly backwards with a high pitched hum. Now the higher the pitch, the greater the speed of spin and the shorter the flight of the ball. The second position is the ball reflected. Now the ball is angled back to reflect or be parallel with the loft angle of the club face. Now this position provides maximum distance because the reflected ball has minimal backspin and it has a very efficient trajectory and it can run on. And when you position the ball backwards towards the face of the club though, be careful not to tip the ball to one side or to the other because if you do, you'll end up creating a duff shot called a fangle which has an unpredictable flight. The third position is the ball angled. Now this position programs a ball to turn right or left in flight. In golf this is commonly known as a fade or a draw. Now in golf cross it's simply a matter of setting the spin axis of the ball and the further you angle the ball to the right, for example, the greater its movement in flight to the right. You'll find that the more that you angle the ball, the flatter its trajectory which will result in a flatter angle of descent and a greater run on. Lastly, the fourth position is called the torpedo. Now, when the ball is positioned horizontally and hit on one sharp end with the other end facing the target like a torpedo, the resulting topspin produces a long, low, bounding flight. The torpedo is a valuable shot, but don't overplay it. Now, to work effectively, it requires specific conditions. It's obviously great into the wind, and the ground to be covered needs to be relatively flat, downhill, and free from hazards. OK, well, that's all four basic positions covered. So now you know all there is to know about the ball, let's take a little look at what you're aiming for with all those wonderful shots you've just learnt about. Well, this is it. I'm now standing in the yard next to the goal. As you can see, it's a tad larger than the hole in the ground used in golf. Now in golf cross, as you know, there are no greens. Instead, there are areas called yards which are marked out around each goal. Now they're sometimes marked out with white painted dots like these you can see, or you might see solid painted lines or disc style markers on other courses. 
Now, the yard is very important because it's only when your ball is inside the yard are you allowed to turn the goal to face you in one of three set positions, so your approach shot is absolutely critical. Now, if your shot doesn't reach the yard, you might end up having to shoot for goal from an awkward angle or trying to lob your ball over the side netting, which obviously isn't going to be ideal for you. Now, as you can see, the goal has two uprights which support a net, which is about two and a half metres high, and it rises from a crossbar, which is about one metre off the ground. The distance between the two uprights, which is the width of the goal, is 1.8 metres. And the top of the goal is marked clearly by flag, as you can see. Now, the goal is a central pivot point with a position device, allowing it to be turned to one of three fixed positions. Now, as you can see, there's a chain which is attached to the goal, which indicates what we call its facing position, which is decided when the course was designed. Now, a player always tees off into the facing position of the goal. The goal can only be moved to another position when a player's ball is in the yard itself. As you can see, I've landed my ball in the yard. Now, I'm not actually in a position to goal out unless I can pull off some kind of amazing Tiger Woods chip. So, because I'm now in the yard, I'm allowed to move the goal into one of the other two positions. Now, how I do that is by unclipping this chain, which is attached to the bottom of the goal, drop it to the floor, take hold of one of the uprights and turn it like this to the best position for me. Now, you'll notice, as I turn the goal on the centre pivot, that it can only be set in a certain fixed position. Now, this is part of the tactics of the game. I can now position my ball on the teacup and goal out to finish this goal before moving on to the next tee. So, what do I do if the ball I played into the yard lands under the goal or too close to it to be able to goal out, like I did here? Well, luckily for us, the inventor of Golf Cross already thought of this, and even more luckily, you get relief of being in this position without losing a shot. Now, as you can see, there's a second set of coloured dots that encircle the goal. Now, the area inside these dots is called the relief area. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes you'll see solid painted lines on some courses or even a measuring cord that's attached to the centre of the goal. Now, I'm allowed to move my ball to the edge of the relief area, but only in a straight line away from the centre of the goal like this. Now, this goal's already in the right position, but if it wasn't, I'd be able to move it around and then all I do is pop my ball on the tee and this time, goal out. Now, as soon as the last player has finished on this goal, it's critically important that somebody returns the goal to its facing position and reattaches the chain. This is one of the most important parts of golf cross etiquette, and you'll read notices reminding you about this as you leave the yard. Now, let's look at the game of golf cross. You may already know that there are two types of games, stroke play and match play. The stroke play game is where you'll start your golf cross experience and it's the clear favourite for all players including golf novices, new players and current high handicap players. With both types of game there's no difference in the shots you play from the tee point down to the yard and the goal but all this changes when you get to the goal. The main difference between the two games is that in stroke play the goal is returned to the facing position after each player has goaled out whereas in match play once the goal is turned by a player in the yard, a player outside the yard can't turn it back to the facing position, or in fact to any other position. Now to understand why this is the case, you need to know one of the rules of golf cross, which is the player furthest away from the goal always plays first. So let's have a look at an example. Under stroke play rules, Red wouldn't need to worry that Blue has landed in the yard further away from the goal than himself. Blue plays first, being furthest away, and then turns the goal towards him to goal out. The goal is then returned to the facing position for red to goal out from outside the yard. Now, under match rules, this is a completely different matter. Red played his previous shot first because he was further away from the goal and secured a handy goaling out position just outside the yard. See, in red's position, blue played his shot into the yard and managed to get a position at a greater distance from the goal, so he now plays again before red. Because blue is in the yard, he can turn the goal to a favourable position. Now, after Blue has played his shot, the goal won't be turned back to the facing position for Red when it's his turn, as it would in stroke play. The goal must stay in its last position. Red will now have to play an amazing chip shot into the top of the goal or play an extra stroke to get into the yard and receive goal-turning rights. Scoring and winning in golf cross is achieved by either scoring points for the number of shots you take or by counting the number of goals you've won having made allowance for the bonus shots you've been allocated. 
And to play in the league, you'll need to sign up to the Course League Championships and also join as a member of the sports governing body, the BIGGGA. Incidentally, there's also a softball version of golf cross. Now, although the softball obviously doesn't have the same amazing flight characteristics as a real ball, playing golf cross softball can nevertheless be very exciting. Now, remember, it's a fun game that anyone can play, including even four-year-old children. A golf cross softball is a fantastic way to get started in the sport. And, by the way, it's easier to hit the ball, control it and find it. And you also get to start in forward position tee boxes, which is a result. We now need to move on to the business of rules. Yes, I'm afraid golf cross has them too. Generally, all the rules of golf apply in golf cross, plus there are 10 additional golf cross rules. These are just a few examples. Rule number one, teeing. The ball can be teed up using a teacup anywhere on the course, including the yard, with the exception of the following. Heavy rough, in a hazard, or in a sand bunker. In all these cases, the ball must be played as it lies. And rule number two is placing. On all fairways, a player may pick up and position the oval ball within 30 centimetres, that's about 12 inches, from where it lies and not nearer to the goal or into the yard. Now, rule number nine, scoring. A goal is scored when the ball is struck by a player and comes to rest within the confines of the goal. Rule 9A, if a ball enters the goal and comes out again, it's still in play. There are additional codes of etiquette and some examples of these include chaining up, reattaching the chain to the crossbar after every player has goaled out. We've already said that this is one of the most important rules of etiquette in golf cross. Gold balls. To speed up play in the yard, balls aren't usually removed from the goal until the last player has goaled out. It's usual for players off the yard to be invited on first to avoid unnecessary goal turning. Well, I hope I've succeeded in giving you a brief overview of this wonderful new game of golf cross. I've got to say, it's a great new game, it really is absolutely fantastic. And once you get going with it, you're really going to quickly appreciate the versatility of the oval ball and how this really intriguing game actually works. Now, to understand it further, the ball and the rules, please refer to the many posters around the clubhouse. After that, if you still need more information, either speak to one of the course staff or purchase a copy of the book Golf Cross Definitive Guide. Well, thanks very much for joining me today and best of luck with Golf Cross.